Uh, hey guys, today we're going to um, talk about solving and graphing compound inequalities. Compound inequalities come in two flavors. The uh, inequalities involving the AND statement and the inequalities involving the OR statement. So our, our inequalities involving the AND statement have a, a graph of the solution set that looks something like this. And what this means is this is our number line. These two points are our boundaries. I've left them open. And this red line here in the middle is our solution set. In other words, um, as our boundaries, just like when we're graphing uh, inequalities, we're saying everything in this, in the numbers between the boundaries, is the solution to the inequality. It is an infinite solution set. There are an infinite amount of numbers between any two boundary points as long as they're not the same point. But any two numbers, there's an infinite amount of solutions between those two boundaries. What the solution set looks like when we talk about and, it looks something like this. I've chosen just a couple of random boundary points, 1 and 5, and it will say something like this. We, we would read this as the solution set are all x's, or all values of x, or all numbers that are greater than 1 and less than 5. So they must fall within this range here. So something like, say for example, 9, um, it satisfies this equation. It's definitely greater than 1, but it's not less than 5, so it can't satisfy this. It has to satisfy this, um, this inequality and this inequality, hence the name and. For the OR type, it looks like this. Again, I have a number line here, and I have two boundary points. But here we're saying the solution set is outside of the boundaries. It's still an infinite set, and I have an infinite amount of solutions. But we have this one area inside where it's not a solution. How we express an OR solution is a solution set that must, and I have to emphasize this, must include the word OR. So, as we read this, it says the solutions are, plural, all x's that are less than 1, all these going this way, or the numbers or the x's can be greater than 5 over here. So again, that number 9 would, yes, be a solution because it is greater than 5, even though it's not less than 4. It just has to satisfy one of the two. An example of something that wouldn't satisfy anything would say the number 2. It's not only is it not less than 1, it's also not greater than 5. So it doesn't satisfy either, so that would be an example of um, a value of x that would not be in the solution set. Okay, please write down uh, our first problem here, and we'll, uh, I'll guide you through this. Um, this is a compound inequality. I have two inequality symbols, and the question really is, what value of x makes the inequality true? In other words, what value of x can I put in here in this expression to make it both greater than negative 3 and less than 9? Well, I like to think of this as a, a Venn diagram. I really have two conditions. I have this condition, where what value of x will that I can place in here to make it greater than negative 3, but then I also have this condition over here. What value of x can I make it so that's less than 9? So the first one I'll deal with is this guy here, and I uh, just solve for x subtract 2 and I have x is greater than negative 5. So I'll put my little boundary point here and I've drawn my solution set not in red but in this color kind of kind of orangish yellow going off into infinity. Now for my little blue guy here I'm going to subtract 2 from both sides and I have x is less than 7. So I draw my boundary point and an arrow going off into negative infinity. Okay. Well, our solution set for the entire compound inequality has to fall between these boundary points because the solution has to satisfy both conditions, both this condition and this condition. Therefore, my solution set is inside or between these boundaries. And we write the solution set as all solutions are all numbers that are greater than negative 5 and less than 7. Okay, you guys try one. Okay, 
Just like before, we're going to take this one at a time. I'm going to deal with this inequality, then I'm going to deal with this inequality. So all I have to do to solve here, add 5 to both sides, and I have a boundary point. Add 5 to both, oops, it, that popped up quick. Add 5 to both sides, and I have the other boundary point. My two boundaries are at 7 and 12. Notice they're both inclusive, so I have to fill them in. This says x is greater than 7. This one says x is less than or, or equal to 12. And that's my solution set, and that's how I write it. Okay, let's try another one. Go ahead. Okay, uh, we're going to handle it the same way. I'm going to first deal with this inequality. I'm going to add 6 divide by 3 of x is greater than negative 4. There's one boundary point. And I'm going to deal with this guy over here. Same thing. Add 6 divide by 3 and I have x is less than 1. There's my other boundary point. Notice it says all x is greater than negative 4 and all x is less than 1. There's my solution set or there's my solution graph and my solution set is here. Okay. Now we're going to take a look at the OR situations. Now uh, today it's going to be uh, fairly simple because we have, well heck, the word OR. And so we basically just have two inequalities that we're going to graph simultaneously on the same line. So I'm just going to, well, I'll talk about this one first. I'm going to add 6 and divide by a negative 2, which of course changes the sense of this inequality. And I have one boundary point. And I'm going to tackle this one, which just requires me to subtract 5. And I have my other boundary point. Again, it's important to be able to read these. x is less than negative 5, so that's one uh, graph. And x is greater than 3, that's the other. This is obviously an OR situation because there isn't a number that can fall in, that can satisfy both of these conditions. So we write the solution set x is less than negative 5 or, must include the word or, x is greater than 3. Why don't you try one? Okay. Um, again, here we want to get um, x alone here, so I'm going to tackle this one first. Subtract 2, divide by negative 5. Again, notice that this switches. Now I'm going to add 3 to both sides, and I have my two boundary points at negative 6 and 5. They're both open, and this says x is less than negative 6, obviously going this way, and x is greater than 5, going this way. So there's a brief overview of, uh, of solving compound inequalities. Thanks for watching.